So previously we've only really covered having one controller at a time. But you can have multiple controllers on a page and in fact you can have controllers that nest inside other controllers. You can, you can have child controllers which nest under parent controllers. And those child controllers can have access to the scope of the parent controller. And it's a way of communicating between child and parent controllers. So in this example, we have one parent controller. And inside that parent controller, we have an input control, which is binding to a scope variable of name. And then we're just outputting the value of name. So a very, very simple example to begin with. Okay, so here you go. Nothing too surprising happening here. Now let's just add a child controller to our example here. So I'm just going to copy and paste some code in here. So now I've created um, a child controller and we're just going to be outputting the value of name. It's If you can see, it's inside the parent controller. And let's just add some code for that. And let's get rid of this scope here. And that should be all we need. So now we've got the blue being the parent controller and the green being the child controller. And you can see that the child controller can read the scope variable of name from the parent controller. Another thing child controllers can do is call functions on the parent controller scope. Let me just show you how. So if on the parent controller I add a function let's call it reset and in here we're just going to reset the name to parent and I'll just go into the index and as well as that we'll just add a button the class of button Oop. and we'll just call that reset and ng click is equal to reset so the reset isn't on the child controller, the reset is on the parent controller. And let's see how that looks. Okay, so now I have updated the name. And if I press reset, it's going to reset the parent scope's name to parent. And then obviously the child is still reading the name and it's going to render that as well. Let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding another input field into the child controller. So let's just take exactly the same as that, put it here. And so we're just binding to the parent controller's name variable. And let's see what happens now. Okay. So as I change this, the child controller is recognizing the change in name and updating its view in both the bound p tag and also the input. The reset is still working. But then something interesting happens. So if I actually try and change the value from the child controller, you can see that the data binding seems to have broken now. Well, we're, we can't seem to update from the child and update the parent. And now we update the parent's value of name from the parent's input control. We can see that the child is really not recognizing any change from the name variable on the parent. Let's just take a look to see what's happening. Now we're gonna use ng inspector just to really give us a hint as to what's going on. So looking at it, you can see we've got the reset function on the parent. We've got a name on the parent, and we've got the child control, which is empty. So as I update the parent name, it's as you expect. Then as I update the child one, you can see what's happened is the child controller has created its own 
name variable on its own scope. And now data binding between the parent and the child seems broken. It's not really broken. All that's happened is the data binding is working. It's just that there's now a variable with the same name on the child controller. And that is shadowing a variable of the same name on the parent controller. 